Okay. Price of gold. The price of gold is skyrocketing. It is currently trading at about $1,700 per ounce. It is projected to um, top $1,900 per ounce by the end of the year. Maybe as high as $2,400 per ounce, they say by 2014. Really? Uh huh. I don't know what the price of gold is going to be. I have no idea. But I will tell you this it is going to go up because of quantitative easing. Holding on to currency or paper money is really not the best idea when people start to print money like they're doing all over the world. Let me show you how this works. Let's say, let's say pi, in my perfect world, pi would be currency. It would be so unbelievably great. Um, pi being currency. Um, let's say there's only one pi and we purchased everything in pi. I mean, it would be hard to make change and it would make our wallets or our purses very uh, messy, but let's just say. Let's say this is all the pie in the world. This is it. You can't print uh, because I'm the exclusive pie maker and I make the pie and I'm only making one. And we keep dividing it. And 10 pieces and uh, you get this piece right here. Let's say it's a billion dollars. This piece of pie would be worth a hundred million dollars. Well, you're not going to do that. You're just going to start cutting it up, splitting that up, and keep making it into smaller and smaller. So this, just this piece of crumb here would be worth an awful lot. If we made it illegal for anyone else to make pie, you could only trade in this particular pie. But the government couldn't do that. How about if I, how about if I have a consortium of bakers that all get together. They're bakers, of course. They're all bakers that we don't know which bakeries they're from, but they're going to come over and they're going to watch over this pie. Now let's say somebody says we need more money. Well, we're still going to deal in pie, right? Yeah, 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 have to. Okay. Well, I tell you what, what we're going to do is um, we're just going to make another pie. Now, if this was worth, you know, uh, hundred million dollars or whatever I said that pie, one piece of pie was worth. If that's worth a hundred million dollars, now how much is that worth? It's not a hundred million dollars anymore. Now if there's a whole other pie, that's now worth fifty million dollars. But that's if I only make two pies. This is quantitative easing. Quantitative easing, now let's do two. Quantitative easing two. So now there are four pies. How much is this slice worth? This is now 12.5 million, right? Is that right? Now, let's say the baker says, this is crazy, because it's still not working. Remember, this is what you have in your bank, but they've just devalued it, because now there's more pies that they're putting out. This is what you have in your account. That's it. Your slice of pie, it's still that one slice of pie. You still had it. I bought it. I have it. But now you can't, it's not, you're not buying. Your purchasing power is nothing. Especially if they say, guys, you know what? Just bring in the pies. Just go, come on, bring them in. Let's, okay, just, they can't audit us. Just keep bringing in the pies. What? At some point, your slice of pie wouldn't even buy you a slice of pie. This is what it works, except instead of pie, it's dollars. We purchase in dollars, not in pie, but there is no difference. That's why things that no one else can make, things we dig out of the ground, oil or gold or silver, that's why that has intrinsic value because nobody can make gold. Nobody can make oil. It's, there's only a finite amount of it. That's why it's a hedge against inflation because when somebody's making more pies... There's only a limited amount of the other. That's why oil has to be purchased in dollars. So why, is anybody asked, why the economies are going down? People are driving less. Industry is down. And yet the price of oil is up because they know the Fed is baking more pies. If you look at oil as gold, which it is, it's black gold. 
the Saudis see that we're making more and more pie, printing more and more dollars. So they just keep inflating it, saying, well, we told you that that was worth one slice of pie. Now that you've devalued that, now it's worth a whole pie. That's the way it is. That's why gold keeps going up. Two years ago, in 2010, you could buy gold for around $1,400 an ounce. Two years before that, in 2008, it was closer to $860 an ounce. Ten years ago, it was $330 an ounce. I'm telling you that people told me I was crazy when I bought it at $330 an ounce. They still say I'm crazy. Really? How's your investment doing, Mr. Banker? Oh, Glenn, it's easy for you to say I have a solution for somebody who had to move to Texas and find a house big enough to hold his ample assets, but for the rest of us, $1,700 an ounce is a little steep. I know that. I know that. First of all, I, I mean, I, I will say I don't know who you're referring to here, the, but there are other ways because it doesn't, it doesn't just work with gold or oil. It works with all other hard assets, precious metals, diamonds, real estate, art, anything where there is one of a kind, anything where you just can't keep making them, anything unique. You have to think like a German Jew circa 1930. I've been saying that for a while, but now is the time, please. What did they do to survive? If that's too far over the edge, think like your grandparents did in the Great Depression. Remember how freaked out your grandparents were? The waste of food or energy 50 years after this thing was all over? They were still freaking out. My grandmother was like, turn off the lights, Grandma, it's fine. Don't waste that vegetable. And then you'd hear a Great Depression story 50 years later. I get a letter from somebody trying to urge me to tell you that this is not the Great Depression. The Depression will look like a picnic. This is global economic collapse. It's never happened before. I can't tell you what it looks like because we've never seen it, but I can tell you this. We can and will make it, but you have to prepare. Bill Gross from PIMCO tweeted a couple of days ago, he, um, he tweeted, buy mortgages, the Fed's going to buy mortgages till the cows come home. Think 7% unemployment, 2.5 inflation targets, buy real assets, gold, a house. I always thought of buying a house was a really bad idea, but I don't think so. There's a couple of reasons to do this. To begin with, the housing market is still recovering. You can get a, a home cheaper than you could have several years ago. They say that the market has supposedly corrected itself. I don't believe that. They say the value of a house will hold steady or even increase over time. I, over a long period of time, yes, I believe that. But I just bought a house. And boy, that took a lot out of me. I mean, I, I walked around it this weekend and I thought, what the hell have I done? Debt free. I will tell you that I prayed on it a long time and I've done my research. And you have to own something of real value. If you're renting, guess what? As they do this, the slice of pie that you have, just like the food that I showed you a minute ago, just like everything else, you still, you still have to come up with the same money. Rent will increase as well, but if you've bought, your payment is fixed. So while the value of the dollar declines, as the quantity of dollars increases, your payment remains the same. And yet the value of what you're paying for could increase as well. Hard assets are very good solutions for countering inflation. As inflation drives up the cost of everything, whether it's bread, milk, tuition, rent, it takes more dollars to buy the same thing. And again, in the case of the house, as long as you're, you're buying, not renting, you're paying pre-inflation prices and harvesting a post-inflation value because the house payment is locked into the times of extreme un economic uncertainty, like these hard assets become more desirable. It is extremely comforting to know that if and when your currency loses its worth, you've purchased something with that currency right now that means something. Just a couple of years ago, Zimbabwe experienced a crisis that saw inflation re 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 uh, reach a whopping 13.2 billion percent before they finally just abandoned their currency. Weimar Republic, 1920s, Germany uh, experienced 66 billion percent inflation. But even in such cases of hyperinflation, certain assets retain their value. Hard assets, intrinsic value, value that isn't based on confidence. People bartered with their assets. They skipped the currency altogether. And one of the big things that is cheap that you can do, at least cheap right now, non-perishable food items. You don't have money for gold or diamonds or land, whatever. 
non-perishable food items. They are extremely valuable if they've been stocked up. Don't tell anybody you're doing it. That's something that every one of us can and should and must do. Traditionally, hard assets don't yield the same return as stocks and bonds, but there is a difference between growing your wealth and protecting what you have. Gold, silver, diamonds, antiques, art, real estate, sp unique items, so specifically in real estate, farmland, if you can afford it. That has a double value. Not only does the land retain its value, but you can use it to grow food. And if you can't buy enough land to grow food, then go to Costco or go to foodinsurance.com. Buy it. Store it. Keep it to yourself. Unfortunately, pie is not a hard asset. It is delicious. But believe me, if you store as much of this as I have, it becomes a flabby asset. I'm saying.